Hey everybody, it's Triple L, and now let's talk uh, anime that popped up a few days ago. So this is coming out really late. I didn't realize that Darling in the Franks came out. Uh, it was also during a period that my computer broke, so that made it kind of botched it for me a little bit. But uh, hey, we're here, whatever. Darling in the Franks triggers next project. And man, when you watch it, you feel, yeah, that makes sense that it's trigger. Uh, this one is a mecha anime, uh, kind of following this pizzazz that was Gurren Lagann and also throwing in some kill the kill urges kind of with the action and then you got also maybe some of that little bit of little witch academia in there because of the kids are kind of all uniformed or in an institute and then you know throw in some kisniver when it comes to a certain aspect that i think is going to be the aspect i think of all the series uh Gurren Lagann and uh, kisniver or kisniver those are going to be the ones that are gonna influence this work anyway this is the trigger series if you love trigger like this is gonna be one of those for you um this video first episode impressions we're gonna talk about it and uh i'm very curious to hear what you guys think um let me know if you, if you liked it down below and uh, i'm gonna try and give this as also uh should you watch this for any other viewer that isn't a trigger fan all right so you know going into this one Oh man, I just, I get flashbacks thinking of Little Witch Academia. For anyone who's watching this now and uh, you also follow my Little Witch Academia coverage way back when, uh, I get flashbacks. Anyway, um, let's, let's, it's, this was good. This is good. I think if you were to say, uh, wait, if you were to sit down and like watch this show, I think for a normal anime viewer, like you don't watch anime too often, I think this is going to be a good show for you. Because it's flashy, it's understandable enough, and the characters, well... The two characters that are important are distinct enough, and uh, again, the action. The action's there, that's going to be really great for the casual viewer. But you know, as I'm sitting there, there are like a few things that I notice that I just, I can't help but just chuckle at a little bit, because I think it's just a tad ridiculous, and what I ultimately come to the conclusion of, this is a show that's style over substance, in certain regards. It's not style over substance when it comes to the action. The action, like... There's substance in the action. There's, it's style over substance though. However, when it comes to uh, metaphors and the way the characters interact with each other, and so that's gonna be a big part that we're gonna talk about towards the end of the video. But let's just clear out the good things first. Like, as a first episode, if you're like wondering, should I watch this? It's like, yeah. Like trigger series in general, start at good and then go up from there. Right, like they are usually well produced um, because of Trigger's unique styles when it comes to animating. Even if the art takes a hit, the animations are still worthwhile. Like they will still pull out some things that make it look really good and are able to overcome their weaknesses. Uh, this is going to be one of those shows. I am, I'm actually, I do not doubt for one second that this is going to be at the very least a good show. Like you know, well, actually no, let's call it average. It'll be average at the very least, and from there it'll just it's actually more likely that it's above average. And this first episode uh, does a good enough job. Um, this show is kind of like post-apocalyptic and the setting is a bit more fancy. So these type of shows have the bigger struggle of establishing the world. And one thing that we do end up kind of having to sit through is terminology and jargon. This could be one of the most frustrating aspects when it comes for regular viewers to just get into a show because it's throwing so many words at you and depending on whether or not you're paying attention or depending on whether or not you have the memory to remember these little terms that are popping up, it can influence the show for you. Uh, little Witch Academia did not really have this problem since it was a bit more rooted in, the, in our world. There was a bit more logic behind it. But this is an entirely new setting. So they're throwing in a lot of terms. They're like parasites, like uh, the Q, Q uh, you know, the dinosaurs, the dinosaur monster that's popped up in the show and it's throwing in other terminologies and uh, uh parasite franks darling maybe that's not a terminology um a weird bird overall though like things considered it's not the worst setting to be thrown into like this isn't so hardcore fantasy like say another show that's going on grand crest senki uh this one is at least understandable it's just one of those things that new viewers have to be paying attention to like there's a lot of terminologies popping up but most likely these are going to be things that are going to be explained later on. Other things, uh, the two characters, the two main characters are interesting enough. And when they interact and they are talking like normal people, they do really well. I like their interactions when they're talking like normal people. And this episode had a beautiful kiss, man. How could I not enjoy that? Buddy, let me tell you. 
No, I, I really like that. So those moments with the two characters when they're acting out of concern for each other, really good. I think if this show focuses more on that, on just simple, I guess, interactions between characters, it's going to be great. I think it's going to be a really good time. We also got introduced to the other secondary characters that we know are going to be important, that being the team that came in with our main girl and the team that started off with our main boy. And we got also introduced to the systems in place in this world. We know it's in a desert. We know it's post-apocalyptic. We know that there's various installations because that one girl that got off that boat went to another one. We know that the Franks by the end work on a male female system and that the main character has a lot of angst because he failed at what his purpose in life was supposed to be. And we know that's his purpose in life because it's synopsis. I'm not too sure if the show made that very clear, but it's there. Um, overall, I think it did really well with getting you to understand the mechanics of what's going on. Sort of like the Franks part gets a bit weird with logistics when you start questioning it a little bit, but it introduces enough to the viewer so that you understand, okay, these are kids. They're living in a world that's in danger of these monsters that come out of the ground. And uh, these kids, um, it's from what it was implied, it's either you're doing this, you're fighting in these machines or you're going to die. Uh, in that case, good enough it was a very simple delivery and that should be applauded i do think because of that reason overall because of the simple delivery of the mechanics of the world ignoring all the weird symbolism stuff i think regular viewers will totally be able to get into this show now let's talk about the symbolism because this is where i think it's gonna get really dicey depending on how they focus on this uh because when i look at this gurren lagan Definitely. When the when that action starts with that mech, it's pretty cool. Heck, I like the whole sequence with the lion myself. That lion was pretty badass. Uh, but there's a lot of symbolism going on here. And it's actually kind of ridiculous how much symbolism they're throwing in there. First off, let's start off with the names of the characters. All the, bo all the children have code names like Zero Two or um, Hiro or Naomi. I had my Japanese speaking friend explain to me um, that there's a lot of wordplay going on with the numbers. For instance, even with uh, Zero Two, people call her an Oni because she has little horns on her head. Oni is like something like Zero and the two and the knee is two or something. Um, Naomi was also playing with that. I think, I don't remember what her number was, but the O in Naomi was the zero. Me was, what was her number? Was she zero sixteen? Anyway. The characters' names are word plays from their numbers. So that's like very surface level. It's just one of those cute little things that you can appreciate from the series. And maybe it'll have something to do. Uh, maybe we can use it later on to come up with some cool theories. But that's just a little detail there. Um, the names of the characters are based on the numbers that they have. The next thing is there's a bird that's mentioned in this series. And it's a bird that apparently can only fly when a male and a female come together. A male and a female bird come together. All right. <laughs> Listen, Trigger. If that bird was to exist in real life, that bird would not get past natural selection. That bird would have no chance. All right. If this is a bird that has to live, it's, it's, it wants to go out and it wants to get into the sky. If that is its primary directive. Uh, no. Okay. Like, okay. Science aside. That was just the point where I was just like, okay, Trigger, I get it. You're, you're, you're trying to go for the symbolism. And sure enough, that's what we're getting with um, when we have the Franks popping up. The Franks is based on a union between positive and negative, male and female. I actually like that they call positive and negative to represent male and female, or I can't remember the exact ordering, but I like that idea because that idea actually goes back to um, some terminologies. Oh, I want to say with... I'm aware of it from Buddhism or Eastern mysticism. There is a school of thought. There is a philosophy that would characterize the genders as, uh, um, I guess, pretty much if you imagine duality. Uh, they would characterize positive and negative. Mind you, uh, don't take offense to the negative part. Negative is a fact of life. In the same way that a magnet has a positive and negative pole. Do not take in any of the context of what negative means as i guess something negative it's just uh two different poles that exist and are connected but are on opposite ends that's the most i think broken down explanation of negative that you should take it does not matter which of the genders is negative that's just 
It's just how the mechanic works. It's just to symbolize, okay, these two people are linked in the same way that a magnet is linked, that there's a pull on either side and in the middle they meet and it's neutral. That's what it's trying to convey. I really like that. Although I don't think Trigger tried really hard for that. I, I appreciate it. Um, that symbolism, then there is, then actually going back to the whole bird thing there, there's a whole thing that uh, the kids live in a bird cage and the synopsis really plays with it a lot. And we see it in this one uh, that the kids are like stuck in this world. They're stuck in this system and that's pretty cool. Uh, it just triggers really heavy handed with it because we see a lot of birds playing out here and it goes back to that bird that can only fly when there's two of them joined together. Like, dear God, trigger. Um, but uh, you have the bird that gets killed while it's while like uh, Hiro is looking out into the into the world and I'm just thinking like I, I don't think that if they have a bird in an enclosure I don't think that bird would be so foolish as to hit the window that's been there its whole life and it's just little things like that it's little things like that that I found really funny and it just it just makes it makes things um it, it just it really is just style over logic in this case because we understand what trigger wants to do when it's doing these things when it has the bird that can only fly with when there's like male and female together i get it that symbolizes the relationship that the kids have between each other cool when the bird hits against the glass i get it uh that symbolizes that the kids can't get out they also make a bigger deal about like the kids you know getting the opportunity to be of use um, which is a bit more depressing and I want to see more of that but it's just um, Trigger seems to be engaging in a lot of the metaphors and it's just in those little moments logic I don't think carries the metaphor through but the intent of the metaphor should be understandable by the viewers who are listening the problem is going to become if the conversations become too convoluted with the metaphors there is no need to have to explain this giant metaphor about something when everything could just be conveyed with a simple five words. Like this is going to be one of the most annoying aspects if they continue along this line. And the reason that I'm bringing this up now is because Kiss Naiver suffered from this because Kiss Naiver was a high, like a very metaphoric show. It threw in a lot of metaphors about what it meant to be united with people. And because of that, sometimes it was not one of the most highest rated of the, um, sorry, the trigger shows. So this is going to be an issue of whether or not the metaphors become too convoluted. Like, even with their first conversations at the beginning with Zero Two and Hiro talking at the lake. First off, like, let's also appreciate, I, I like that whole sequence. I thought that was really good. Um, him seeing her naked and she being okay with it and him handing her her underwear. Uh, that was cool. That was a cool little sequence. But when they start talking, it's just... It's just too convoluted for its own good. And the funniest sequence of that is where she's like, oh, this doesn't taste salty or something along the lines. Like, this doesn't taste salty like I thought or this isn't very ocean like or something along those lines. She's making the comment that this is not tasting like she thought the ocean would taste. And then Hiro say, well, yeah, it's not an ocean. And she's like, well, yeah, I know that. And it's just I'm just saying it's just like that is the epitome of needless dialogue right it's it's just something that triggers making her say just to have a cool intro and it's again the style over the logic and it's just it was funny it was funny but it's also just it's useless dialogue it tells us nothing except that this girl just like says useless things at, at least for that part um that said trigger is one of the few studios that would make me look at lines like that and just laugh at them for a little bit there is some aspect of her character that's coming through for that, but I really do think that's more of a, a director choice. Go, that whole, like, the convolution in the dialogue is just a director's choice just to make things seem more epic or seem more intense, when in reality, things are very simple. And that's ultimately what we get towards the end when the when Hiro is just saying, uh, let me help you, or something along those lines. Like, his intent is carried through that he's going to help this girl. And then after that, everything gets super streamlined. You know... I enjoyed it. So, at the end, we're 15 minutes, but Trigger Shows, I love talking about them because they have a lot to talk about. There's a lot of interpretations to take out of this. I'm super excited for this. I'm sure the mecha parts are going to be amazing because Trigger hardly ever 
disappoint when it comes to hardcore action. And they have another studio helping them on this one. And I think the soundtrack's also really good. I am interested to see how they're going to balance out the metaphors. If we get, for instance, a couple of episodes that's just people talking and we keep seeing the dang metaphor of the kids in a cage and that just kept, keeps getting repeated. Okay, like that's, it's, it's, at that point, it's a bit too heavy handed. I get it as part of the show, but that's going to be where it starts to drag. Um, if the characters, however, can just talk to each other like normal people, if they can just have a normal conversation and just express what they want to express without making it 10 lines longer than it needs to be, I think it'll be fine. And this is just an issue of um, wanting the show to reach the biggest audience it can. I want it to do good. And one of the best ways of doing that is to just, when it doesn't need to be convoluted, don't make things convoluted. That said, I think I'm being very critical about this. Now, you know, I just, there were a lot of little spots I think I could have made fun of and it was just funny. And one thing though, um, and this was just interesting because I had my friend Kara re uh, watching this with me and she made the observation that they're really pushing heterosexuality a lot. And I thought, well, I guess. And I just, I wonder if the fandom is going to pick up on that. Is the fandom going to pick up on that and say that there's an agenda? I actually find that kind of, I, I found that curious because it didn't even occur to me. Uh, but all right. I want to see how people are going to go about this. Because uh, I know trigger shows in particular ha develop pretty large shipping communities. Um, I, well, at least Little Witch Academia de developed a pretty rabid one. So I'm interested to see if this show will also develop it. And it should, because this show has some pretty cute character designs. It's nicely drawn, and the characters are understandable enough, at least for the first two. And especially with our main girl being so bold with the main character, like, this must be launching ships. So I'm interested to see how that observation is going to play out in the fandom. And I'm actually interested in what you guys think about that. The idea that this show is championing heterosexuality. Um, it, it was not even a thing to think about, but just go along that line of thought. How do you think other people will react to that? Of course, you don't have to like say anything about that if you don't want to. It's just an interesting thing that my friend said. And I thought, well, okay, that's pretty cool. Anyway, um, almost 20 minutes, but you know what? Trigger shows, I'm so happy for it. And just to give more context to like explain why I just hit on the metaphor so much is because I really liked Kiz Naiver. I didn't, I was sad that a lot of people, it, that it didn't reach as much popularity as everyone else. And like a big thing with Kiz Naiver was that sometimes it would just circle in on itself too much. It would get too caught up with characters not being able to express themselves. And that's the last thing that I want happening here. But we'll have to see whether or not this show goes more on the action or goes more on the human element. That's going to be the question, but we'll see till next time. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'm so interested in any opinions you guys may have. And uh, yeah, have a great day.